Alright guys, welcome back to the channel if you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today for the very first time here on this channel, we're gonna react to a short clip of Hatun Tash. There's not much to say about Hatun Tash other than that she quite often speaks in the speaker's corner, she's debating quote-unquote, if you will, Muslims. Her approach is always very loud, very vile, very provocative, and I personally do believe that is due to a mental illness. Generally looking at her, I do see a mentally ill, disturbed person, I don't see a sane person, and oftentimes we see that, that mentally ill people find their way into religion, no matter which religion that is, and then they kind of project their mental illness onto the religion. And then, of course, people associate their mental illness with the religion. They believe that the religion is vile and loud, etc., etc. So I personally believe that most Christians wouldn't even claim Hatun Tash as a representative of them. Anyways, the reason why we're reacting to her today is because she speaks about Tyson Fury and Tyson Fury mentioning the name Jesus Christ in Saudi Arabia. Wow, what a big deal! All right, guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. In the times of trouble, in the times of joy, in the times of grievance, in the times of wedding, in the times of losing or winning, the name of Lord Jesus Christ will be lifted up. And today, in Saudi Arabia, where Christians are being persecuted, and even as a Christian, you can't even enter the certain part of the country. And traveling there is quite difficult as well. All right, man. First and foremost, it's not difficult at all to travel to Saudi Arabia. Any Christian can tell you about it. Quite the opposite. Saudi Arabia has become somewhat of a tourist hub, and therefore Christians are welcome, Jews are welcome, any other religion is absolutely welcome. But if you're speaking about Mecca, yeah, duh, Mecca is a pilgrimage site for Muslims. What's the problem with that? Look at Mount Athos, for example. Mount Athos is a pilgrimage site for Orthodox Christians. In order to enter Mount Athos, you need a visa, a specific visa in order to enter the premises. But moreover, dear Hatun Tash, even you as a Christian would still be discriminated. First and foremost, because you're not Orthodox, but secondly, and more importantly, because you are a woman. Mount Athos is exclusive for men. A pilgrimage site only for men? How misogynistic! How absolutely bigoted! Yes, there are certain restrictions for certain people that cannot enter religious sites. This is not exclusive to Islam. And just think about it logically, man. It is a pilgrimage site for Muslims. Do you really think anybody wants you to be there? Of course not. And the same applies to any other religion, be it Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism and whatnot. They all have certain exclusive temples where only their type of believers can enter. Yet, name of the Lord Jesus Christ is being lifted up. Praise She's such Tyson a Fury demonic for face, lifting up name of the Lord Jesus Christ, even when he lost the match. <sighs> Okay. An incredible performance. Yeah. You, you look like you had him in, in big trouble in the early rounds. Yep. What went wrong in there for you tonight, Big Tyson? First of all, I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for his fantastic fight, Alexander. Um, I believe I won that fight. You know, I thank Jesus for all the victories he's given me. I've got a great decision lot for the good little man. And I thank him again. In the mighty name of Jesus, we go back home to our families and running back in October. Good luck to Alexander. Well done. God bless you. I always find it funny when Christians say, God bless him. What does he mean with that? He's mentioning the mighty name of Jesus, etc., etc., and then in the end he says, God bless him. Why don't you continue then saying, Jesus bless him, if you truly believe that Jesus is God? If Jesus is God, he is God incarnate, he is the second person of the Trinity, why not say, Jesus bless him? Right, But intuitively, naturally, people understand, of course, that God, the expression God alone, is higher than Jesus. Because God transcends personhood. Of course, not in Christianity, there he has three persons, but I believe in the fitra, of course, as a Muslim, and therefore I know that people internally understand what it means when they say, God bless you, and not Jesus bless you, because Jesus is a prophet of God. Scripture talks about one day every knee will bow down to Lord Jesus Christ. Every knee. That includes all the knees of Saudis. That's going to happen willingly or not willingly. 
Oh, yeah, all right, there's just some more evangelical nonsense, of course, because ultimately every single religion has certain eschatological claims. The Jews, for example, project into the end times that the Goyim, the Gentiles, will serve them as slaves. And I believe that every single Jew will have at least 2,000 slaves, Gentile slaves, that is, right? That is their claim. Your claim is that every knee will bow to Jesus Christ. I believe this is based upon John, but I'm not too sure. Anyways, this is the claim of your religion. This is the claim of your scriptures. First and foremost, we would have to clarify if your scripture is legit, if we can trust it in the first place. Otherwise, it's just wishful thinking, ultimately, and... Yeah, well, you know, that's just like... Uh... Your opinion, man. Of course, we give thanks for Tyson Fury for being brave enough to lifting the name of Lord Jesus Christ in that pagan, adultery country. <laughs> yeah, Tyson Fury being brave enough, quote unquote. Tyson Fury was, until that fight, the heavyweight champion of the world in boxing. Do you really think that he has to be particularly brave now in order to proclaim what he believes in? I highly doubt that. And moreover, it is, of course, hysterical that <laughs> he's lifting up the name in this pagan country where those pagans believe in the worship of one god alone. Tyson Fury, on the other hand, has to pray to a man to intercede for him, to pray to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to pray to the Son because he is the only way to the Father, etc., etc., you name it. Yeah, this is not pagan at all. Jesus Christ in that pagan adultery country. Oh, adultery as well. So there okay. is being shaked with the name of Lord Jesus Christ. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Dear Such Saudis, a good morning, affairs, man. be ready. Glorious gospel will come to your house, to every house. Wow. Steps are being taken already. <laughs> name of Lord Jesus Christ is being lifted up. up. All right, this is it for today's video. Yeah, absolutely epic speech. Well done, Hatun Tash. So in the end, she says the gospel will come to every household. First and foremost, I believe she's quoting Islam here after all, because we know that Islam will enter every household. She's definitely misquoting and mixing up something there. But moreover, she's talking about the glorious gospel that will enter every household. Which gospel is that? Is it Matthew, Mark, or Luke? What are we really talking about? Which gospel is it? Because we can read in the Bible, in Matthew 4, 23, and he went through all Galilee, Jesus, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So if we are sincere and intellectually honest, we of course have to recognize that Jesus is preaching a specific gospel within the Bible. However, it cannot be the gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It has to be another gospel, because at the time there were no gospels of Mark, Matthew, and Luke, let alone the gospel of John. Therefore, if we are honest, we have to admit that we do not have the gospel of Jesus. And that implies then that the later gospels are essentially stories about Jesus, if at all, because as we know, they're not eyewitness accounts. Nevertheless, even if we say those are legit, they're not really the gospel. They're simply stories about Jesus. Similar to Hadith, but less trustable in the end because we don't have a chain of narration. But nevertheless, again, even if we give it the benefit of the doubt and we say those are really stories about Jesus, then that's what it is. Those are stories about Jesus, but it's not the gospel that Jesus preached during his ministry. And this is why, if you look into Islam, you find an answer for that question, for that dilemma as well. Because we believe that Jesus was given the Injil, that would be the original gospel, that he then preached to the children of Israel. Because within the Bible we can find as well that Jesus was sent only for the children of Israel, for the lost sheep of Israel. But anyway, such honesty we cannot expect from Hatun Tash and her friends. Ultimately, their hearts are sealed deaf, dumb, blind. The message of Islam is very simple for some people, too simple indeed. Some people are asking, okay, what do I have to learn about Islam before I can accept it? I was the same way. I came from a Christian background. 
the Orthodox Christian background is even more complicated, a lot of Greek philosophy infused into that doctrine, and therefore you make things super complicated, super hard to wrap your head around. And then when you are faced with the simplicity of Islam, sometimes even that is overwhelming. So what, you're telling me I should pray to only one God alone? I shouldn't associate any partners with him? Jesus is just a prophet? But wait, isn't he the son of God? But ultimately it's like a self-inflicted prison. You will never find peace within your heart if you associate partners with God. We know that as Muslims. And ultimately, every Christian understands that as well. They want to defend their doctrine. They want to defend the ideology that is just human nature. But ultimately, no Christian can answer who they are truly praying to. What's your laser focus when you're praying to God? Is it Jesus? Is it the Holy Spirit? Is it the Father? Who are you truly praying to? Then they're going to tell you to everybody, of course, and then ask Mother Mary to intercede for you. This is a scattered approach to the magnificent unity of God. And as long as you use that scattered approach, you will have a scattered mind as well. You won't be spiritually fulfilled. Ultimately, you're in rebellion against God. And I said it before, there are just two modes of operandi, if you will, in this world. Submission or rebellion. What does Islam mean? Submission to God. How do we submit to God? By praying only to him, him alone, worshiping him without any partners and obeying his commands. You cannot find that in Christianity because the law has been lifted allegedly. So therefore you're not following any law in your religion. You don't have a guideline for your life. And moreover, you're not praying to God alone. This is a recipe for spiritual failure. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh, 